Hey everyone, we're wrapping up the end of the day, end of the show, and, uh, and it's a good one as well. You're gonna to wanna to pay attention to this. So Life Zone Metals, and this is the CEO, Chris Walter. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm glad to have you as the last one to wrap up because this is an interesting story that people need to pay attention to. And we like it partly because it's nickel and nobody, it's unloved and uncared for, and that's what mm -hmm. we love. But I don't wanna yep. steal all your thunder. <laughs> Well, <laughs> How have you found the show and tell us about your project? Yeah, no, I think it's been great. I think um, you know, I'm always intrigued when you go to these you know, re retail events. I mean, you, you come across some phenomenally um, intelligent individual investors, which it's, uh, it's a nice change up because, you know, you go through the institutional conferences, but then, um, yeah, this has been really well run. So you know, credit to Red Cloud for having us here. Excellent. And, uh, you know, nickel has been in the, the news a lot in a negative mm -hmm. way, but, you know, if you, you listen to, say, Rick Rule or you like any one of the commentators in the space, they go, listen, if it's unloved, I'm real interested. I mean, yeah. it's like we're not going to use nickel again, please. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, you know, mentioning Rick's a good point because, I mean, he, he invested in LifeZone in April. So I think, you know, what does Rick invest in? He invests in world class assets at, you know, at the bottom of the cycle. And yeah. So that's, you know, fortunately, you know, that's that, that was the time that worked out for him. And I think, um, you know, for the stock right now, I mean, you know, where we are with nickel prices dragging us down, you can actually buy in cheaper than Rick bought in. Yeah. So it's it's the counter cyclical investing. I mean, that is the time. So for people to understand bigger long term macro trends and energy transition, metals will you know go through their cycles. You know, nickel is working through a supply glut coming from Indonesia. Um, but at the same time, all the mines that are closing that's going to affect prices positively in the future. So we work through it. So that's why you want to be investing in, and especially for, for us as a, a nickel miner right now, you want to be building these and you want to be in peak production when nickel prices recover in the coming years. So we're timing wise, we're kind of right where we want to be. Um, but now is kind of the time for investors to, to get in, um, especially because we have a number of big catalysts coming up. That's also good to know. And I, I mean, I'll, I'll arguably say Indonesia has a, is not as clean as one could hope for, and we're moving forward to a very yeah. clean environment, which is the, the second part of your story. You're kind of like a tech play as well, because you have a clean mm -hmm. process, uh, and we, we don't have time to go too much in detail, but yeah. it's a hydromet process. Tell us what that is, because that's a big part of the story as well. Yeah, and our, and our mission as a company, I mean, what we're really doing is, is providing solutions to mining companies to remove the dirtiest part of their supply chain, which is um, the smelting. Highly energy intensive, these smokestacks are you know, spewing into the atmosphere, uh, our hydromet process and capability, we remove the entire smelting step. And so that, that gives the, the mining companies opportunity to meet those CO2 targets and the reductions that they're, that they're focused on. And I think the, um, you know, for us to do that in a, in a way that, um, yeah, we're, we're providing that solution to the market. And I think that's, that, that's what mining companies need. So, so our mission is to clean up the supply chain, um, replace smelting with hydromet. And uh, we're demonstrating that right now in the market with two of the largest mining companies in the world, with BHP, and Glencore, so I think we're we're credentialized in these partnerships, and I think this is, you know, for us, this is demonstrating to the market that Hydromet has uh, the you know the potential to replace the smelters, and you know we're just beginning. And that's I mean, if you you're kind of mentioning BHP and, and uh, they put 100 million into the project uh, so mm -hmm. far. I mean, that, that puts a lot of credibility for any retail investors looking. I mean, you got the Rick Rule where they're like, oh, I'm listening, mm -hmm. uh, but you've got BHP for 100 million, and you're coming in cheaper uh, if you look at the stock today. Yeah, yeah, and, and you're getting into a world-class um, nickel project. And I think of all the nickel projects in the world right now, um, we're at such a superior grade, and grade is everything. Yeah. And I think with BHP, um, you know, for them to, to go back into Africa, having not been in Africa for over a decade, and to come into Tanzania and to come into Lifestone in this project, that's a, that's a massive uh, credentializing factor because, um, um, you know, we couldn't you know, look for a bigger, better partner than BHP to come in. I think the... Uh, um, the value that has for us uh, as, a, as a smaller player. Oh. Yeah, it's, it, it gives this project, you know, the, the very strong likelihood of, of, you know, actually getting built and getting done. And I think that the Hydromet, you know, complement that we provide to BHP, and interestingly, BHP had a shareholding in this in the 90s. Okay, yeah. A lot of the initial drilling, it was done in Kabanga and in the region was done by BHP through a, a joint venture back in the late 90s. So they understand this asset intimately. Okay. And I, I, moving forward, you said there's a bunch of catalysts that people have to look forward to. Yeah. I mean, if they're not excited about, I need to pay attention to this story, yeah. 
if they're looking real short term, which unfortunately some people are, what are some things they can kind of hold you to like till Christmas or early yeah. next first quarter? What should they be looking for? Yeah, I think what the market can expect, um, you know, the rest of this year is, is two major announcements. One's going to be on the offtake. We've announced to the market that we're in a process. Um, we did announce a few weeks ago that we are we signed an MOU with Jogmec, which is the Japanese parastatal. I think you know, the market can interpret that as to which direction we're going. Um, so the, the marketing uh, announcement that will come will be a, a pretty big expectation from the, from the investors. And then number two, uh, finalizing the DFS and getting the DFS published and announced, so the definitive feasibility study. Um, and what that does, that triggers BHP's option to then go and do the next investment tranche. So, so the markets, uh, you know, our core investors, these are the two th big things they're waiting for. Um, so there's a window for, yeah, for equity investors to get in now before, um, before we get these big catalysts out. So we're, we're pretty excited. Excellent. And we like, we'll leave it at that because that's enough there for someone to kind of get their head wrapped around. Reach out to me if you've got any questions too, and I'm sure we can send it on any questions that you have. But uh, that's a great way to wrap up this uh, fabulous event. Lots of great companies, but to end on a strong note like this with a partner with BHP, I mean, mm -hmm. and also, as you know, Rick Rule doesn't throw money at a junior exploration stock. Like, that, that doesn't happen. <laughs> no, he doesn't. Uh, so this is a, a great way to end it, and we really appreciate your time and telling us about it. Great. Well, thanks for having me. All the best. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Cheers.